want to know what the movers and shakers of New Hampshire's performing arts are thinking? Welcome to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. Try to stay under the radar. <laughs> well, you didn't do it. You missed that. <laughs> um, it was really very fascinating. And, and again, because um, I looked at, you know, actors, actresses, comedians, the different people in the industry. Right. I had no idea that there was such an interest yeah. in at least this segment of what's happening in the Bank of New Hampshire. Yeah. State, so. Well, I think it's probably a lot of it is the project. I mean, it was a big big thing to, to have happen in Concord. So. Yeah, yeah, apparently yeah. so. And I'm really surprised. That, um, you know, so get that. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I told you how to turn that down, but you don't want me to forget. So I'm just going to plug these headphones because we don't need them. <laughs> I'm sure there was a key for that somewhere. But. <laughs> so um, based on that, um, the fact that the original podcast we did was right. is currently still the number one listened to podcast right. uh, episode. I thought, and the fact that now you're open and it's been open for a while, right? You know, maybe we get together and yeah. chit chat about. It. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. When did we do the other one? That's was a it? very good question. It was in the spring sometime. The spring. Right? Okay. Yeah. So it was definitely uh, before we opened. Yeah, okay. it was somewhere somewhere near market days. So it might have okay. been late spring because I think. Okay. In a week or two, you we had were some about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you thought it was good timing, yeah. which apparently it was. So, do, talk to me about this. Um, um, are you are you pleased with what's happened? Are are you? What I really want to know is, did it come off as smoothly as you had hoped? <laughs> yeah. uh, were you able to come in under budget, which very rarely things do? Mm -hmm. uh, is everything working like you had hoped it would? Like the seats retracting in the big jumbo screen? The jumbo screen hadn't been in yet. Correct. Um, so let's just chit chat about sure. all that. Well, uh, that's a lot to unpack there. I know, I know. <laughs> we did open. <laughs> uh, getting to opening was uh, a challenge. Okay. Uh, we got our certificate of occupancy on a Thursday, our liquor license on a Friday, and then we opened on Saturday, June 22nd. Wow. So those last few days were uh, rather intense, uh, just making sure everything was done and ready to do the first show. Which we had committed to months earlier. Yeah, it's like yeah. put the stake in the I ground. Uh, we're going to have to do a show starting sometime in June. Let's pick a date and we'll work towards that. But it was right down to the water. So, man, oh, <laughs> just man. yeah, because I think the last time we talked, you even had you were hoping to tie in somehow with the um, with the market days, right? You yeah. you had bands that were playing and you were hoping to bring them over and let them see or perform there as well right. or something like that? So we, we did uh, our first production uh, was Ed Balloon, uh, artist out of Boston. I and uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we did that at a 10 o'clock show on Saturday night, the, uh, the last night of market days. And uh, we decided not to do the 8 o'clock show and wait until market days was officially, you know, sort of over. So there were a lot of other music acts playing at uh, uh, the Eagle Square and Bicentennial Square, and we didn't want to step on their toes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all the local musicians around we had invited to come down uh, for that opening night. Uh, so we wanted to give them an opportunity to get there and not have to cut their show short. <laughs> so, And that worked, worked great. Yeah, did they show up? Did you yeah. have a good attendance? Yeah, we had a good attendance. Uh, it, was, it was a mixed crowd, lots of different age groups there. Uh, it was a younger artist, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, you know, hip-hop and uh, uh, music that you wouldn't associate with probably 50-plus-year-olds, <laughs> but okay. uh, but he was fantastic and uh, put on a, a very energetic show. We did not have our video wall at the time. Okay. Uh, that was still uh, in transit uh, to us from China, and uh, that came later in the summer. But, okay. uh, we did so, that. aside from the Jumbotron, um, or video. Is there a technical name for that? I don't want to keep calling it Jumbo. Well, uh, we just refer to it as it's an LED video wall. Okay, yeah. it's Jumbo Drum. But it is okay. a Jumbo Drum. <laughs> so, aside from that, did you feel prepared to open that night? Or were you anxious about things that maybe still weren't quite done in the pipeline? Uh, sure. There were things that we knew weren't done, but uh, we knew that we could handle a crowd. Uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge we had that evening was... Um, 
opening the kitchen and doing the food and beverage service. Uh, you know, beverage, we've done bars at the other venues. So right. That's an operation that's very familiar to us. Uh, and putting on a show is putting on a show. Right. Um, so, you know, the mechanics of doing all that wasn't like we had to learn anything new. But food service is, you know, other than restaurant experience when I was a, you know, college kid, uh, which was a long time ago. Huh. Uh, there were very that, invented they, college, right? Very few of us internally that, you know, ever really ran a, a full, full-on food service operation. So we did hire a food and beverage manager. But it was the timing that we couldn't get in the building to get the kitchen operational until we had the certificate of occupancy. So everything was squeezed into a day and a half, uh, including trying to train staff and get the kitchen help up to, up to speed. So that was probably our biggest challenge uh, during opening. Uh, but we still we served beer and wine, and uh, we had a full bar. Uh, on the second floor, and uh, you know the food service uh, was there. Uh, we've been tweaking the menu ever since and trying to improve that operation. But uh, you know we've done I don't know forty some odd shows already since we opened. Yeah. It's just nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's getting great reviews. I mean, right. I keep looking at Facebook. The comments are wonderful about the venue. Yeah, every artist that has come through, um, they have been very pleased. Uh, just, you know, we have a great technical staff. Uh, Eric DeSalt is our new production manager on site. Uh, he does most of the events there. Uh, Ethan, gosh, I can't remember Ethan. Ethan, oh my gosh, I can't remember Ethan's last name. Oh, sorry, Ethan. Oops. Uh, Ethan's been handling the audio for, for most everything. So it's been a nice two-person team there on the production side, taking care of the artists, making sure the sound and lights look great. And and then when we got the video wall installed in July, uh, starting to incorporate that into the shows as well. So how's that working? Is it working well, like you thought it would? Is it uh, Better. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is uh, the best thing uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm glad we, we decided to go with it. Um, you know, initially it's like, well, we'll put this technology in. And we knew we would use it for the broadcasts, you know, the Met and the National Theater Live and the Bolshoi Ballet. But how were we going to really use it for shows? Mm -hmm. You know, as what kind of background images would go up, what kind of effects. Um, most of the bands that we're booking don't come with their own audio or, or lighting guys, so it's our in-house staff that puts all that together uh, each and every show. And uh, Eric has... has turned into a master of the video wall and uh, has really uh, dived into the software and really figured out how to make the best use of it. And uh, he's done some, some incredible things. So a lot of these events now become multimedia events, is that? Yeah, yeah, that's safe to say. Uh, and we have a, a camera in place uh, where we incorporate that into the background as well. Um, you know, it's uh, we'll run digital effects on the video wall and then we'll overlay the artist when they're doing solos and, and things like that. It's, yeah. it's a really pretty cool. Do you have a roving camera that goes throughout the crowd as well, or throughout the house? We or? don't. Not, it, we've got one camera fixed uh, position, but we can uh, remotely pan, tilt, zoom uh, into anything that we want. So is it like the NFL where you've, they've got that yeah. one that's on the cables that <laughs> does yeah. the three, 360 degree? Yeah, it's an optical zoom, so it doesn't actually move. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but that would be kind of cool. Well, then, yeah, yeah, the next the next uh, iteration, right? Yes. Yeah. So 40 groups, so that's a about, pretty yeah. good test. Really. Yeah. Um, are things panning out? like you thought? Uh, have there been any hiccups? Now that you've got these 40, you say, oh, we didn't think about that. Well, uh, you know, there's always something. Yeah, right? which uh, is good. I mean, because it, it embellishes you. It helps right. you to embellish the yeah. next. I would say, um, you know, we spent most of the summer uh, finalizing the work on the project. I mean, we were open June 22nd, yeah. but there were still pieces that needed to be finished off. Um, and it was our soft opening period, mm -hmm. uh, which we stayed in until our grand opening, which was just a couple of weeks ago now. But uh, so we kept peddling that as uh, the soft opening. We're still fine tuning, still, still tweaking. Uh, I got to say the, the audio and the lighting systems have uh, worked pretty uh, great since day one. 
uh, they just keep improving over time, uh, you know, as we, you know, finished off the video wall and other things. Uh, that just gets better and better. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, like I said, the food service operation is one that, you know, we're still striving to, to get right. And you know, we're trying to minimize the wait times, but we're not fast food. Yeah. Uh, we want it better than concession food. Um, and, uh, you know, doing that, but also offering decent wait times, uh, you know, is, is a challenge. Yeah. So that's, that's still being tweaked. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's moving along. You had mentioned um, earlier that you were hoping that maybe one segment of what was going on, speaking of the beverage, the food and beverage, yeah. was that you were thought maybe you could draw an audience just for food. Right. Has that panned out? Not as well as we'd like. Uh, summer was, like I said, because of it was a soft opening, we weren't trying to push the volume too much. Uh, we were trying to finalize all our systems. But uh, we do allow people without tickets to come in uh, to the building. So whenever we're opening, uh, whenever we are open, um, you can come up, have a drink, grab some food, um, sit at the bar uh, in the upstairs lounge area. And uh, if the show's going on that night, you know, you'll hear it from the lounge, uh, but we don't let you into the theater unless you purchase a ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've had some people do that. They'll, they'll come in, they'll, they'll say, what's going on tonight? And they'll walk in off the street and uh, we'll say, well, we're doing a show. And try to explain what it is. And uh, say, eh, I don't have a lot of time. I wasn't really planning on being here at a show, but can I grab a drink? And it's like, absolutely, go on up. And uh, that, that's been a, a nice exposure of the building to, to people. So yeah. it may not be their, uh, it'll it may be their first visit and not to see a show, but then they'll be back for, for yeah. a show at a So you don't quite have the, um the uh, mindset of people that this is a place we can go eat. Just not quite. And but, but you're not a restaurant anyway. I mean, you're really not. We're not. Uh, we, we don't uh, want to compete with our restaurants on, that are on the, the street, um, so many of which are our restaurant sponsors from mm -hmm. Capital Center for yeah, the Arts. Good point. <laughs> and, you know, we, we encourage people to go go out and sample the fare from all of our, our sponsors, and uh, the, the, the restaurants are an integral part of serving the community when we have big shows. Uh, but where that additional amenity for the patrons that are coming in and, uh, like I said, for people that want to explore the facility but are maybe not ready to uh, see that particular show that night. Uh, so getting them in there is, has been good. The challenge, though, is we're not open consistently like a restaurant. So um, most of the time we're trying to book uh, Fridays and Saturdays so that there are shows at 8 o'clock on most every single Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then the food service operation in the bar opens at 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. till closing, which is an hour after the show, as long as people are hanging around. Um, that seems to work. Um, but it's tough. You know, if, uh, if you're in town and we don't have a show on a Friday night, uh, well, mm. then it's you know it's not a place that you can guarantee that you you will have something yet. Yeah. So that's the challenge mm. for for that end of the operation. I was on the Facebook page the other day, mm. and it led me, of course, to the website. Pricing is fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, we have de uh, purposely kept uh, the prices as low as we possibly can. I mean, artists have to get paid, right? <laughs> right. And the building has to be self sufficient. Um, you know, we do, we're a nonprofit, and the Bank of New Hampshire stage is no different. It's part of the Capital Center for the Arts. Um, but the operation as a whole, we're, we're trying to not rely as much on donations um, each year to support the operation. And that's a challenge. Uh, but uh, we are committed to keeping those ticket prices. It's wonderful. At entry level. I mean, like $15, 20 for a live show. Yeah, we've had some as low as $8. Um, and uh, we've been doing some dance parties uh, as well as just regular live music. And, uh, those have been pretty popular. Uh, so we're, we're excited to do every genre there is. <laughs> it's pretty, are you finding the same thing with food? Are you, are you able to be competitive price-wise with what's happening around, or do you need to embellish that somehow? Yeah, we price our food and beverage um, at you know, sort of a reasonable price for us to, to you know, come out okay. Yeah. Um, it's not a huge moneymaker, um, but it does contribute to the bottom line. Um, you know, uh, we actually lowered the price of our beer at the Bank of New Hampshire stage as opposed to the Capital Center for the Arts. 
So <laughs> it is less gem, of, hidden gem alert. It, hidden it, gem alert. It, exactly. It's like, well, stop in at the, <laughs> the Bank of New Hampshire stage pre-show and uh, have your seven dollar beer there instead of the nine dollar one at the Capitol Center. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, but that was a conscious effort to, you know, know that people that are attending the Capitol Center tend to come to one show or maybe two shows a year. And the ticket prices generally are higher there. The caliber of artist is a you know, and more national, well known, you know, Jay Leno, things like that. Um, and Chevy Chase, which we just announced, is coming in the spring. So Wow. That's um, big. But those prices tend to be higher, reflecting the caliber yeah. of talent that you're getting there, or at least the, the amount that they demand from us to pay them. Yeah. Um, a lot of the music that we're bringing in is uh, up-and-coming artists, people that are just really getting out there. They're they're touring and uh, they're they're trying to get out of the bar scenes and into you know a small venue, small, venues, yeah. small theaters where it's more listening than you know playing to a bar crowd. Right. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's it's nice to get out of that atmosphere and into something a little more elevated. Um, but they don't demand as much, uh, you know, in the way of pricing that you know someone that's more nationally known would yeah. and as a result we can keep those prices low and uh, that's good and there's enough for the artist to have and for the venue to have yeah. to make it work, work, yeah. work no it was really impressive yeah. i mean for i've been to theater that costs more than some of your shows right and so it really makes for a cheap evening relatively right. evening yeah. out yeah uh, it's actually, uh, you know, when you you look at a lot of our shows where it's like a fifteen dollar ticket, yeah, and uh, movies that, cost that. Movie, I know a movie uh, will cost you twelve, fourteen dollars yeah. nowadays for an evening. Yeah, it's like, that's insane. Yeah, the popcorn <laughs> costs as much as the movie. Yeah, it's not a meal like you're getting there at the sure. Bank of New Hampshire stage. Right. Um, technology wise, yeah. Uh, so you're happy with the jumbotron? Are you? Are do you have other plans for it? Do you, do you want to incorporate it more? Um, into things, or, or are you still? Is it doing what it's meant it's to do? It's actually doing pretty much what it was meant to do. Um, the we've had a couple of live Met operas already, and our audience that you know was used to seeing it in the Capitol Center, where our projector was uh, showing its age and the colors and the, the uh, clarity of the image were just not as sharp uh, as, as we would have liked. Um, Thankfully, moving everything over to the new space and making use of the LED wall um, it is like night and day. Uh, the, the color rendition is is right on target. The brightness level, in fact, <laughs> the video wall is so bright uh, that for the Met and NTLs and Bolshoi's, we run it at forty percent brightness. Is that right? Yeah, um, I, we put it up to one hundred percent, but it is blinding. It is too bright. It's remarkable. Um, the uh, when we do it for a live show, it's actually turned down even more. We run it typically at twenty percent brightness. Seriously, absolutely, yeah. That is remarkable. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was probably the surprise. And it's LED to boot, so yeah. it's not even like it's yeah costing you a lot of money to run it to begin with. Right. But the longevity of LED, if you run them at one hundred percent brightness uh, constantly, it does tend to shorten the life. The lifespan is 15, 20 years, yeah. but you know, in continuous use. But still, if we were able to run it at twenty to forty percent brightness, is just it should extend the life even yeah, further. So yeah. we're happy. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, boy, so many questions. Um, so as long as we're on the Met and that type of stuff, how are the audiences for that? They've been growing. Uh, you know, the Bolshoi's and the NTLs typically don't draw as large a crowd as the Met Opera. Um, However, uh, we've doubled pretty much our regular attendance at the That's NTLs. Uh, and we did a lot of them in September or October, uh, purposely putting a, a, a whole bunch of them into the schedule early on just to get people into it. Yeah. Uh, the Met is done live, uh, and we don't preempt it uh, like we did at the Capitol Center for another show. So we do the Mets live in the afternoon. That's They always start at 12.55 p.m. And... Uh, committed to doing all 10 of them this season uh, live, and that's been working out great. In fact, uh, the Bolshoi, uh, which uh, is broadcast out of Russia, uh, by moving it to our Sunday afternoons, we actually broadcast the Bolshoi Ballet live as well. Jeez. So 
Yeah, because it's 8 p.m. in wow. Russia. And this is all satellite, I assume. All satellite, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys have really done a wonderful. This is really, truly remarkable. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, there's one other aspect that I don't even know if we talked about it last time, but uh, we did go ahead with uh, solar power. On oh, you had said that you were thinking of it. You hadn't gotten around to it yet. Yeah. The time. Uh, so that did get installed. Uh, we went operational with it on July 1, and it is generating uh, large amounts of power. Um, I, we're going to get through the first year before we, we figure out exactly how we're doing, but the estimates were that 90 to 100 percent of our power use would be generated by the solar energy. So, Jeez. Yeah. So yeah, but hats off, boy. I, yeah. This is just really yeah. stunning. Now, if I remember right, you don't store the power, right? It goes to the grid? It goes to the grid, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. And then you get, I forget how that works. They, yeah, it's... They uh, cut you so much for like yeah. a rebate or something on your you, you kickback. You essentially sell power to the grid, and then yeah. you purchase it back. Yeah. And it, it nets out to a nice savings. Yeah, um, I bet. But uh, we worked with uh, Revision uh, Energy, Revision Solar, uh, which is an employee-owned uh, solar company. They do a lot of projects. Local? Are they, local? Um, they are in the Northeast. I know they do some projects in Maine and, and New Hampshire. Um, Dan Weeks is uh, the project uh, guy that we worked with a lot, um, and I believe he's Concord-based. He's been to a few shows, which is great. Nice. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Now, how about the retractable seating? Is that all what you had hoped it would be? Uh, that is working well. Uh, it does retract. Uh, it didn't That's extend. good. It extends. <laughs> uh, so one of the little quirks as we were moving along with the project is, uh, you know, Steve Martin, our production facilities manager, myself, um, the architect, we had all visited uh, the seating manufacturer in Maine. It's a uh, Hussey Seating. And, uh, you know, we, we had our wish list of what do we want the seating to do and what do we want it to look like and how comfortable does it need to be etc and put all that stuff down and uh, they developed a price and a package for us and and then the devil's in the details of course it's like as we got to the point where uh, you know we were picking out colors uh, for the seating which we went with those shades of red so four different colors um, there was oh the donor plaques for the naming of the seats um, the size you wanted won't fit on the arms because the style that we did to have the stadium seating required them to fold down in a way that wouldn't allow that. And so we had to shift the size of the plaques smaller. And in the end, we ended up putting them on the back of the seats anyway because we, we like our donors and we want them to be recognized. Yeah. Yeah, right. um, so that was one little snag. Another was the cup holders because every seat has a cup holder. Uh, but again, in the retractable section, um, what we were looking at was a cup holder right on the arm. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the way everything folds and stacks, which is miraculous the way it works anyway, um, those had to move down below the armrest. So it's, you know, down a little bit lower by your leg. And, you know, it was just, I, I'd say it was just annoying because mm -hmm. like, well, what we wanted was this. Yeah. And, you know, it, it would have been nice to have known. Uh, that so that was something you found out later? It was later in the, in the uh, process. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so, you know, you go through all these things and say, that's what we're going to get. That's that cup holder. That's that name plaque. That's the aisle lights. And then all of a sudden, uh, it felt like all of a sudden. Of course, we were dealing with thousands of details, uh, you know, from the CCA team, just trying to, keep the project on track and moving along. And uh, I'm sure it was in the in the submittal that they gave to us, somewhere buried in the fine print, as it were, that uh, we had to change the cup holder to this style because. But when we found out, it was like, what? <laughs> Why didn't we know this sooner? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just say that's you know part of managing a large project. Uh, there's uh, a myriad of details that have to be worked out. And uh, no matter how uh, good you are, um, and none of us were devoting our full time to the project, we were still running the Capital Center for the Arts. So trying to fit all of that in and keep track of all the details and moving parts, um, it was uh, inevitable, I guess, that some things like that happened uh, and got 
missed, overlooked, or felt like a surprise at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, it still works, though. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, Thank God. you know, we, we may grouse a little bit internally about, gee, we didn't get the cup holder we were really after, yeah. but the cup holders function. And, and they look good, and they, you know, what, what more do you want? That's <laughs> so, right, right. And they didn't cost more, so that was fine. So sticking with technology, you've got the uh, video wall mm-hmm. and the retractable seats and the yep. solar. Are there other components that you you either are thinking now about adding on technology-wise that yeah. would enhance the experience, or, or even that are working in the background nobody would ever see? Yeah. Uh, well, our audio system is, is really uh, great. Uh, we did find out. Um, now, you had tested this, didn't you tell me? You we tested did. We it? tested it actually at yeah. the Capitol Center. Right. Um, but part of our programming was, uh, you know, you, you design a sound system and you want it to satisfy the bulk of what you're doing. And the bulk of what we're doing is live music and, and some comedy and some theater. Um, the DJ dance nights or EDM nights or the metal nights where you really want to feel the bass a lot more, mm-hmm. typically, um, louder than I want it. Um, we had uh, subwoofers that are flown uh, on either side of the stage with the speaker arrays, and they push out a great amount of bass, uh, which you could feel in the balcony and not quite as much on the main floor for those dance nights. So we did enhance that. We, we bought... Uh, additional subwoofers to put under the stage. So that, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, nice. Um, and and that's I, I guess the the process of the soft opening and, yes. and moving through is everything we bought, designed, installed. Um, you know, eighty ninety percent is working the way we expected it to or intended it to. And then we're finding, based on our programming choices or, you know, the, the amount of rentals that are coming through to do standard corporate events and parties and things like that, uh, what else do we need? Mm-hmm. And then we're addressing those needs just by making small changes. Yeah. Um, nothing, uh, nothing had to be wholesale changed. Like, Good. You know, Thank the audio you. system pretty much the way it was, added subwoofers. Yeah. Mm, no big deal. <laughs> Where, where's the feedback coming from for something like the subwoofers? Is that from the artists themselves, or is that from the audience that says, yeah, this could have been... Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, you know, the the artists spec what they want, and when you're dealing with uh, um, uh, DJs that are sort of coming out of the city that have... You know, they're, yeah. they're known, they're as popular as live artists in some cases. It's like, yes, I go there because that DJ is does a great show. And, you know, their requirements for an audio system have been varying uh, from the live music. So right. that was the biggest thing was uh, uh, getting additional subwoofers. And uh, that allowed us to not rent. Uh, and there's another aspect of it. Um, a lot of bands will come in, but they won't carry all their gear, depending on how they're traveling. You may have to provide the drum kit, uh, a couple of oh, the guitar that. amps. It's really? the back line. Um, and we made a, a decision early on that um, looking at all the shows that we had booked and what they were requiring of us, um, that we would actually purchase some equipment um, so that we didn't have to keep renting it. So it's permanently in house for artists that yeah, need it. Yeah. So we do have a drum kit. We have a couple of guitar amps, a bass amp. Um, haven't invested in a keyboard yet, uh, but we'll probably go down that road at some point. Uh, Where do you get all that equipment from? Um, we usually buy from MFI, uh, oh. which is uh, a music factory. Uh, they've been around for years. Uh, they were the ones that did the audio system for us. Um, and. Uh, you know, we rent from them quite a bit and, and from other audio companies in the area. But, uh, you know, uh, strings and things, I think we've, we've gotten guitar amps and things from. So, You were hoping in our last discussion that this would work very synergistically with the CCA itself mm-hmm. in that this would move some things yes. off the plate and, yeah. and open up like so that you could have two things happening at one time. Has that worked out like you had hoped? Uh, That is working out. Um, We frequently have shows on Fridays and Saturdays at the big theater and also at at the new venue as well. Which we couldn't before. Which we couldn't before. Or was a struggle. You know, it was was much harder to do. Um, So that has worked out great. Uh, We just have to be careful about the type of programming we put in each venue. So 
in what um, way? If you're attracting the same audience, um, then you're splitting your efforts. Oh. So it tends to be a contrast of um, you know uh, the crowd that's attending the Bank of New Hampshire stage event that night isn't really the the audience that you have at the Capitol Center. So when you have your dance so. competition, is heavy metal down the other <laughs> yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's generally worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done shows like the Indigo Girls and then had a, a another show at the other venue and Indigo Girls sold out and uh, the other show, which I don't remember what it was that night, also did well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we've, we've been uh, managing that. The hardest thing uh, honestly, is uh, the toll it takes on the staff. So we didn't. Um, you we're sharing staff essentially between the I two see. things. So there's a lot of double duty, you know, and figuring out who needed to be at which building when, and how do you get the artists paid at the new venue? Um, you know, we've had systems in place at the at the Capitol Center for years, and it's like it's so routine in a way that. You don't think much about it. Are we talking software-wise, or is this... No, just uh, people moving and getting checks signed. And, oh, uh, oh, okay. You know, uh, artist deals are not frequently anymore. Just a flat fee, come in, pay you a sum, and, and send you on your way. They're always a percentage of the box office after you meet expenses, for instance. Um, so you don't know what you're paying them until you've sold the last ticket that night at the box office. And uh, so there's only a few of us that can sign checks <laughs> and doubling the volume, essentially. Uh, even though the checks are smaller, there's just... You still have to be signed. Out. Yeah, you still have to be signed. You still have to process all the paperwork and, you know, collect W-9 forms to pay artists and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's uh, sort of the minutia uh, and the administrative side of, of the arts. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's important. I mean, it needs to be done. Uh, but uh, it has been a bit of a challenge. So are they feeling some relief down at CCA over the fact that some of these uh, programs have been able now to migrate over to the Bank of New Hampshire State? Yeah, it has freed up uh, a good chunk of our uh, calendar uh, to book other things, Um, and we are filling our event calendar with uh, more more shows um, and uh, definitely more uh, rentals, you know, whether it's uh, birthday parties and the other uses of the space, sure. corporate events, you name it, because um, we're available for anybody, for yeah. anything. Right, right. <laughs> um, I don't think we've done uh, very much with politicians lately, but uh, good. We're <laughs> I despise well, them. Yes. <laughs> well, Suck. I think we could all like take a break from politics. Would yeah. Be great, but uh, you know. New Hampshire, first of the nation primary, so got to tolerate that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we had um, spoken a little bit, uh, we touched on the last time, about logistics for artists as they come in, because you don't yeah. have a back, or you didn't have a back area for them to, yeah. to come in, and no place to put them up, essentially, you know, right. no green room-ish we, kind of thing. Or, we do have two small dressing rooms okay. back there, and a, a smaller kind of green room. Um, we have equipped them. The green room's nice. It's got a couch. It's got a little table, a fridge, kitchenette. Um, that works pretty well. Uh, the, it's find it interesting, the music uh, that comes in. You know, typically we have an opening band and then the headliner. And uh, they each take a dressing room. And a lot of times I'll go back there and it's like, well, they're in their dressing rooms, but no one's in the green room. And I'm like, well, that's where the couch is. <laughs> Fine. Go sit on the couch. <laughs> no, but they're, uh, they, they make good use of the space back there. Uh, as small as it is, it's, it's sufficient for, for the bulk of it. Have you had any problem bringing in large equipment or, or anything? That- no. Uh, right now, uh, we have a temporary uh, loading dock back there. Yeah. It's basically a wooden deck mm-hmm. off the, uh, uh, in the alley. Uh, that will be converted to a permanent one uh, next year or sometime after the spring um, as the uh, south side of the property gets redeveloped by Steve Weren't Degree. you also hoping to eventually make that an outdoor venue? Yes. Yeah. Is and that still on That's uh, still on the books. That's is? still on. Nice. Yeah. So uh, a lot depends on, you know, when can we do that will depend on 
what the construction flow is like on the other side of the alley mm -hmm. uh, where the uh, old uh, families and transition building was uh, uh, or is I should say <laughs> still is there uh, steep debris is got plans for that area uh, I don't know when it will all happen but I'm guessing sometime in the spring we'll mm -hmm. see some construction activity are you finding that there are certain acts which marry up very well with the stage as opposed to others? I mean, are there some things just fit more naturally in that space? Yeah, you know, we've, we've, we have six different uh, layouts for the room, basically. Uh, so some shows are fully seated, um, a listening room environment. Uh, a really great example of that was uh, Anais Mitchell came in. Um, she's... Uh, and won some Tonys this year with her musical Hades Town on Broadway. Right, we spoke about that. Yeah. And uh, that was sold out, but uh, her music and uh, her her performance was really geared for a sit down audience and a very uh, personal listening experience. And the the seated layout lent itself to that. So uh, that was great. We've had some other artists where we've done uh, tables in the front, seats in the back, and the balcony reserved and. And that seems to work pretty well for certain artists as well. Um, we're about to expand and do some comedy, um, and that will be more comedy club-like. So we'll be uh, tables and, and chairs in the front, uh, like a comedy club, uh, and then seats in the back. So um, uh, the, the layouts are flexible on purpose, and uh, we're finding which ones work the best for certain shows. And sometimes yeah. we get it wrong. And... Um, it's 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 always a challenge when when it's like oh this isn't really working out tonight. Uh, we we did totally general admission on the main floor with no seats, and the music and the, the performance style. We we should have had seats. <laughs> People, you know, should have been able to sit down. Um, so we try not to get that wrong. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't want the audience uncomfortable or the performer. Right. Um, and there are sometimes it is the performer saying, "No, no, our audience, uh, you know, we'll listen to all their music." And it's like you listen to some, and it's like, oh, "All right, that sounds like a sit-down crowd." And then when you're working out the details with the bands, it's, uh, "No, no, everything we do is is uh, stand-up, so we don't we don't want seats." Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Okay, um, I listen to your music, and I <laughs> I'm going to disagree, but it." it you know, we'll go with what you your audience expects, yeah. and uh, most of the time it, it's working out. But uh, you know, there's always uh, you know something that is like, gosh, I wish we could have done that yeah. uh, better. <laughs> so the holidays are coming up. Anything uh, in tune, in uh, special for the holidays? No, uh, the holidays. Uh, I think the lineup at Bank of New Hampshire Stage. Uh, like I said, we were doing some comedy, um, uh, lots more music. No specific holiday show, okay. uh, at least that I, that I can recall. Okay. And if anyone's listening and goes to the website, bankinhstage.com, and, and finds a holiday show there, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> um, we do have uh, uh, some holiday fair coming up at the, the main theater, uh, which we usually do. We've got the Nutcracker mm -hmm. uh, coming in. It's a local production, but we also use the Southern New Hampshire University uh, Symphony uh, the community orchestra that they have, uh, and that's nice. Uh, the the proceeds uh, from the show partially go to uh, support their music scholarship program, for instance, and that's that's a nice touch. Um, uh, did that last year with them, and it, it was it was really good. Um, and then we're doing uh, some family shows like uh, Laurie Berkner Band this year at Christmas. That's in the big theater as well at the Capital okay. Center. Uh, Capital Center. You know, this is one of the struggles that we've had, too, is like, what do we call ourselves? You know, the organization is the Capital Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, the venues are the Bank of New Hampshire stage. And what everybody calls Capital Center for the Arts is really named the Chubb Theater after oh. Chubb Insurance from yeah. back in 95. They were a lead, spot, a lead donor on the project. So we've been trying to resurrect the Chubb Theater name a bit. Um, 
but people want to call it what they want to call it. Uh, and it's kind of like the, the Bank of New Hampshire stage. Uh, a lot of people have memories of it when it was the Concord Theater, so they'll still call it the Concord Theater. That's interesting. And, uh, and people still call us the CAP or yeah. the Capital Center. The Capital Center is what I call it all yeah. the time. Yeah, so it all depends on how you related to the building uh, if you were uh, in town or grew up when it was the CAP or the Capital Center or uh, before it became the Capital Center for the Arts. It was the Capital Theater, so um, it, it is different. A lot of audiences for us are, are first-timers. I, I usually ask them at, at shows, uh, which we, we do curtain speeches at the big theater, but on the other one, we just let the show start, mm -hmm. right? You know, we're not trying to make a pitch for your money or anything like that. Not that we do that a lot at Capital, <laughs> at Capital and Center. And not that you couldn't use the money. Not that either. we couldn't use the money. Oh, and actually, you led with one question. We haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, since we're talking about money, I will I will mention it. <clears throat> so the project did go over budget a little bit, um, mostly on the equipment. Um, you know, what we needed for the building. I can't even say wanted, but we needed for the building to work uh, for audio, lights, video, et cetera. Um, the price tag um, came in much higher than our back of the napkin estimates from three years earlier when we first put the project together. Um, so there was a cost overrun there. Uh, the rest of the project came in. Uh, it, we spent all the contingency, which there was uh, $250,000 of contingency, and all of that got spent. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of structural work that was unexpected that needed to get done. Um, but uh, we are still fundraising, so uh, we're not fully paid for yet. Okay. Um, and to keep those ticket prices low, uh, we need donors to fill in the last little bit of funding. Uh, say a little bit. It's about four hundred and fifty thousand or so. And if we close that out, which we hope to do by the end of this calendar year, uh, those pledges, because we allow people to pledge over a five-year period, uh, those pledges will help pay off the debt that we had to take on to finance the construction because, you know, construction guys want to get paid while they're doing the work, not right. two years later. Right. Um, uh, and, and we'll be debt-free on that building, which is the goal. That's incredible. Right. And it ended up being a $6.9 million project in the And end. by the end of this year, you potentially see being debt-free. Yeah, um, we Joe, we have raised six point five six point four five million specifically for that theater. We've raised a little more because we're also capital campaign at the yeah. at the big theater, but uh, we only have that last four hundred and fifty thousand to go, and uh, every little bit helps. I got to tell you, that is you know? fascinating. So, you know, the cat's off again. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's that's impressive. Yeah, and uh, you know we have done a couple of other capital campaigns. You know, '95 when we reopened the Capitol Theater, and again in 2003, and both of those were were great campaigns and got the Capitol Theater reopened and uh, and then renovated uh, to finish off some like a phase two that never happened in the original renovation, um, but that didn't retire all the debt that had sort of crept up. And uh, this time around on the capital campaign, we were we were very aware that our goal needed to be to not have any kind of debt hanging over the facilities uh, when we were done. So that's what we're shooting for. Um, and if we don't raise it, it just means we're paying those finance costs yeah, each year. Right that could be spent on more programming or, or other things. Yeah. That, you know, so we, we'd like to say that uh, you know, the holidays are coming up, end of year, if you need to take IRA distributions, a lot of people um, tax are, yeah, they're tax deductible, and it, a lot of folks that are, set, what is it, 70 and a half and up, uh, you have to take a minimum distribution. It's mandatory. You, right? So even if you don't need the money, you have to take it out. If you give it to us, then it's not taxable. <laughs> if yeah. you take it yourself, then it is. Um, and uh, those people that are in fortunate positions where they can make that choice. Uh, yeah. uh, and I know of one person that uh, had contacted us out of the blue just the other day and did just that. 
uh, uh, wonderful uh, decision, you know, at this time of year. So, yeah, yeah. So as those things are coming up, uh, you know, I'd encourage uh, any listeners here to. In four hundred thousand is not a lot of money. It's not a days. lot. It's it's so achievable, yeah. uh, and we've got some applications out for some some grants from foundations that will take out some sizable chunks of that, but. Uh, you know, we, everything from you know five dollar donations on up is is what's going to get it done. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, just getting back to the acts yes. that you bring in. No, no, I'm glad yeah. we we covered yeah. that because I, I was concerned. Well, yeah. curious, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've seen uh, quite a few acts, very different. Which is really really nice. Yeah. Are you? Are there still other types of acts that you want to bring in, which you think this would be a good fit for, but you hadn't seen any yet? That... Right. Uh, well, we are. Uh, we, we've had a lot of requests to do metal. Right. Really. Uh, yeah. And uh, so we had one booked, and the the headliner uh, canceled their tour, so that show from last week ended up uh, getting canceled as a result. Uh, but we've got another one coming up. Uh, it's called Purging Sin, uh, and it's coming up in a couple of weeks or so. Uh, so that'll be our first metal night, and I think there's a couple of bands there that night. That would night. be interesting. And it'll be kind of fun and different. Um, you know, the things that are working and the things that are not working, it, it's still a work in process. Um, there's no genre, I think, so far that we're like, oh, we should never do that again, mm-hmm. which is good um, uh, because... Uh, the music industry in particular, I think, has, has turned into this niche-driven, uh, there's no, you know, the, the record companies they don't have the clout they used to have. Um, and artists are more independent than they ever were. And as a result, they're making their money by traveling around and gaining audience wherever they can. So there's a lot of smaller groups that have loyal followers all around the country, but they're not in... You know, it's not like everybody has heard of them. But you, once you've, uh, you know, found that that artist, you're going to follow them right. and try to find them right. wherever they are. Um, are they reaching out to you? Are these smaller artists reaching out to you? To yeah, we uh, when we started booking, uh, you know, it was you know you got a knock on the door of uh, a lot of uh, artist agencies, and uh, we we know quite a few from the bigger theater, but different divisions handle different size artists, so. Uh, you're you're down at a lower level with uh, two, three, four hundred seats, mm-hmm. and um, uh, so we we leveraged the contacts that we had and uh, did a lot of cold uh, offers out to smaller agencies that were handling artists that we thought would be a good fit for us. And uh, the initial response to that was, "Oh, this is really cool. Uh, where are you guys?" <laughs> I'm like, well. Yeah, we're in Concord, New Hampshire. It's like, yeah, no, sorry, there's no big college here, and um, yet, yeah, no, we're we're in, we're we're not in a major market, um, and uh, yep, yeah, no, the venue doesn't exist yet. <laughs> so uh, we we're very appreciative of the artists that we had all summer long that gave it a try. Uh, said, all right, we'll explore Concord's a new territory for us. We haven't played there before. Um, you know, they've gone to Portland or to Boston right. or, or other smaller venues that are more established. Um, and those that have come, um, without uh, without a single exception, I think, have all uh, loved the venue, loved the technical staff that we have and, and the fact that the space was really great. And uh, they're looking forward to coming back. Um, and we're going to have a lot of them back um, as we continue to build the, the crowd. But uh, audience sizes, we could be happier with. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing opening a brand new venue, though. Mm-hmm. And particularly, I, I want to say Concord, you know, has that reputation of not being uh, the most hip place in the world and sort of sitting in a coma has been floated around. You know, it's mm-hmm. yeah. so to bring nightlife to downtown on a regular basis in this kind of volume yeah. is quite a change. And, uh, you know, there, there are definitely uh, uh, local uh, folks in the area that are, you know, 15 minutes away or live in town and they're exploring a lot of the, the shows that we're doing and they're coming multiple times. It's great. Um, there's just not enough 
in Concord alone to really keep the building hopping. So yeah. we've expanded our marketing out into Manchester and other places where we can really sort of bring the people up. But it's a learning curve for a lot of them. It's like, Concord? Uh, I don't go I to know. Concord for anything. Right. You know, it's like, well, and I don't go to Manchester for anything, quite frankly. <laughs> well, until they actually kind of so, improved downtown anyway, there wasn't a lot of evening. There's nothing right. to draw you there at night. Right. So now, uh, you know, Concord is much more active at night um, uh, than it used to be, uh, and a lot of that was the street renovation project and reconfiguration. Uh, there are more businesses downtown, and uh, in town Concord, I think, has done a fabulous job expanding out from Market Days, which was their is their major event. But uh, they do a lot of things with the local businesses downtown and uh, try to promote downtown Concord as a place to come, yeah. a vibrant place. And uh, we'd like to think that our new venue is contributing to that, um, and uh, expect. Um, fairly good growth uh, throughout this first year of operation. Well, the good news is, well, you're only barely five months in. Yeah. <laughs> which is remarkable. Yeah. I mean, so any any activity for yeah. only five months, right. less than five months probably, right. actually, yeah. is is wonderful. The marquee outside is gorgeous. Thanks. That uh, was designed, uh, uh, the architect came up with a design for it based on a 1943 sketch that had been found in the Concord Theater. They had visions of putting in a, a fairly significant marquee, um, but which never materialized. And then uh, uh, Glenn uh, Shablik over at uh, Neopco Signs uh, did a fantastic job uh, manufacturing. Oh, it's it's all handcrafted. Uh, there's of course, yeah. uh, you know the the LED displays are the only manufactured item that are in there. All the neon, all the aluminum work that housed the neon is all. Handcrafted at Neopco Signs. And nice. Like I said, Glenn and uh, uh, Lenny uh, in his shop um, uh, did, just did great work. Um, and uh, down to the wire to get it in place. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, of course. But uh, it's it's been a fantastic addition to downtown Concord. Oh, it's stunning. Uh, it just stands brighten, out so well. Brightens up the, uh, you know, and I, I get that, you know, light pollution and, and some other things can be a, a detractor. Um, but you, uh, for a theater especially, uh, you know, if if you're not out there, it, yeah. people just pass you by. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, you'll you know they'll the, think you're the shoe. Yeah, you're a guy, don't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, one last question, sure. Adam, and then we can wrap it up. Unless you have something more to, to talk about. But yeah. um, as a theater person, yeah, I've seen. I know you're not a theater venue. Um, but you have had one or two acts in there, right? That how have they played? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think what we did do for theater. Oh, we did re-entry the prison one or the something. prison one. Yeah, re-entry actors playing jazz or something like that, and uh, it was an improv style uh, performance. Um, and uh, uh, that that was a great uh, evening of theater. Uh, and uh, I've taken a little bit of a break from that because. Uh, we wanted to really get the music established. Right. Uh, but we do have on the books uh, Theater Kapow uh, with uh, two or three shows coming up. Uh, we're also doing uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, uh, Is it a one man show? A one man oh. Winston Churchill. We actually brought him to the Capitol Center last year for a school performance, and we were planning an evening performance with him as well because he does this fantastic uh, portrayal. Uh, one-man portrayal, but with some multimedia presentation going on too, and uh, he had a had an accident last year and slipped off the front of the stage at the end of the school performance, and uh, couldn't go on that night. So this year he's coming back, and uh, we thought, well, it's a much better fit down at the new theater and with the video wall. It will just be, you know, uh, fantastic. Stunning, yeah. So we're we're looking forward to that. Um, and we've done some community productions. Uh, we did the Concord Coalition to End Homelessness has done a talent show. Really? Yep. Uh, did that in early October on a Saturday night. Uh, drew a packed house. No kidding. That's good news. It was very good. And uh, they have confirmed and uh, will be back next year for their second one. Uh, so that's will become an annual event. I'm glad you brought that up. Are, are you finding uh, that artists are re-upping? 
when they're done? Are they or are they like, yeah, thanks, uh, it, uh, it was great, moving on? Yeah, um, well, music artists that we book through, um, you know, they've all actually expressed interest in coming back. Um, it's a, then a question of the timing. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you do them a year later, or do you bring them back in the spring, six months later? You know, it's like, what's the rotation going to be? Um, and uh, we haven't sorted that out yet, so I don't think we've booked a repeat yet, but, you know, um, we've got a lot of new talent to work through still. <laughs> There's a lot going on. I mean, yeah. when I went out to the, your uh, website, it's just pages of acts that are coming out. Yeah. It's really fascinating. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, keeping track of all that has been uh, such a challenge. <laughs> uh, and you know, we're still, like I said, struggling a bit internally, staffing-wise, just to make sure that we don't burn anybody out. Because um, you know, we all love the arts, but you know, there comes, yeah, it, it's it shouldn't be your life. Um, you need a life outside of your your work yeah. environment. Uh, so we're very aware of uh, the burdens that we place on our. Uh, uh, staff and uh, and ourselves and as well at every level of management and uh, try to spread the load and make sure that people are are uh, you know working hard but not working themselves too hard where you know we have a, a loyal staff and it's been uh, one of the joys of, of working at the Capitol Center is people that are committed to the organization to the arts in general and um, and putting their time and effort in and going above and beyond, which is yeah. uh, incredible in a mission-driven organization. You know they do it anyway. That's the type of people you have. Yeah, but uh, you know, can't say enough nice things about everybody I work with. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, it's just uh, it's a fun place to go every day. Yeah, and we want it to stay that way for everybody. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. 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 Well, congratulations. Yeah. Really, Thanks. it's it's just yeah. a, such a great yeah a addition to Concord. Yeah, it's and it's. I, I just only hope it continues to be the bright and shining star that it, it seems to be, it pretends to be at this yeah. point. Well, wow, we're we're committed. Uh, I, we, we can't just yeah. build it and then <laughs> shut it down. So <laughs> right, uh, everything we're doing there, uh, you know, uh, long term, you'll probably see programming changes evolve as we become more familiar and more adept at what's working, what's not working. Um, you know, you want to satisfy the audience. You want them to see things that they want to see but you also want to challenge them a bit as well right and uh then expose them to something that you know are, yeah. you you haven't seen this before you got to give it a try an interesting balance that you have to try to create there yeah well yeah. my hat's off to you again thanks brother thank you very nice right thanks so much. for having and there you go another great one in the tank that one's going off to the memorial. Have a great day.